Johnny Dollar. Clark Tracy at Providential Assurance Company. Yeah, hiya, Clark. I'm glad I caught you in. Are you free to take an assignment? Sure, why not? Did you ever hear of Kennett, Missouri? No. It's a small town about 100 miles south of Memphis, Tennessee. So what goes? We have a little office in Kennett, only it's become pretty obvious that we put the wrong man in charge of it a few months ago. What do you mean? His name is Charles Kingsley St. Clair. Lived in Boston most of his life, and he's a Harvard man. So? He doesn't have the least idea how to deal with those people when it comes to any problems or adjustments. In other words, he simply doesn't belong. Well, the answer to that ought to be easy enough. Transfer him. Give him a job somewhere up here in New England. Exactly what we plan to do, and close up the office there in Kennett. Okay, then why call on me? Because of the death of one of the few remaining policyholders down there, a man named Casper Crump. Yeah? His widow, Eufa Crump, has to be paid the $5,000 his her and, of course, signed for it. Well, what's so tough about that? St. Clair says that he can't do it. Why not? Well, if you must know the truth, he sounded somewhat scared of the whole idea. Oh, now listen. So, Johnny, will you go on out there and take care of this thing for us and get us off the hook? But on the strength of what little you've told me. I know, I know, but I'm sure St. Clair will be able to make it all perfectly clear to you. So I'll wire to him that you're on your way, okay? Oh, no, no, look. Johnny, I promise I'll okay your expense account without question, even tack on some kind of a fee. Well, well, now you're talking a language I understand. If the fee is big enough... Then you'll do it, fine. Now take it easy until we settle I'll the amount... i right away. Clark! Then wait to get your report. Wait a minute, will you? Thanks a million, Johnny. Bye. Clark! Hello! Ah. <laughs> Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Next time you refresh, enjoy a frosty, ice-cold Pepsi-Cola. Sociability, Charlie. All right, Kay, how's this? Pepsi is light, refreshes without filling. You like to refresh? Have a Pepsi right now. Well, offer it to everybody, Charlie. I will. Enjoy Pepsi at the fountain. It's delicious at home, too. Have one at lunch or with a snack. Charlie. At the beach or at dinner. Wherever you go, wherever you're thirsty, Pepsi is there. It's here, too, in our Be Sociable song. Be sociable, look smart. Keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Stay on and stay. Have a Pepsi. For the weekend, have plenty of Pepsi around. Pick up an extra carton today. CK, I'm sociable. With Pepsi, everyone is. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Providential Assurance Company, Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the moonshine matter. Expense account item one, 7545, plane ticket from Hartford to New York to Memphis, Tennessee. Item two, 301 for a bus to Kennett, Missouri. I arrive shortly after noon. Yes, Mr. Dollar, I shall be glad to get away from here and get back to civilized country again, where I won't be looked at askance because I choose to dress for dinner. I see. I must admit that some of the, uh, some of the natives living here in town are fine people, intelligent people. Oh, I'm sure they must be. This looks like a nice town. But the ones out in the country to whom my predecessor sold insurance, life insurance... Yeah, what about them, Sinclair? Poor white trash is all they are, ignorant, illiterate. Moonshiners, for the most part. Oh. Only half a dozen of the policies he issued even have signatures on them. The rest are signed with an X. The people didn't even know what they were buying. Uh, your predecessor must have been quite a salesman. Hardly a fit representative for a large insurance company. Which, of course, is why the company got rid of him. Yes, Mr. Dollar, I shall be glad to get away from this, but uh, until the insurance payment can be made to Mrs. Eufer Crump... Well, any reason why you just can't call her in here and hand her a check? call her. How? What do you mean? She lives in the swamp, Mr. Dollar. In the swamp? 
20 miles swamp up north of here. It's terrible country. It's hardly fit habitation, even for the wildcats and coons and otter and the cotton mouths that infested that treacherous, swampy jungle. Ah, I see. A veritable nest of moonshiners, too. And if you think a, a gentleman would dare to simply walk in among those people... So I'm no gentleman, so you sent for me. And don't forget that Casper Crump died under, shall we say, questionable circumstances. Oh, now, what do you mean by that? The natives all say it was murder. What do the police say? The police have sense enough to leave these people alone and stay away from them. Oh, great. But, Mr. Dollar, if you can somehow clear up this one remaining account, get this money in to Mrs. Eufa Crump, and I have it here in cash all ready for you. Stick my neck out to save yours, huh? Uh, To be honest about it, yes. Okay. Let's say I'll try. How do I get to this 20-mile swamp? St. Clair drew me a rough map, handed me the five grand, and wished me luck. Item three is 20 bucks deposited on a rental car from one of the local garages. And what a car. It should have hit the junk heap 15 years ago and was actually held together in spots with bailing wire. The left-hand door was closed with the help of a piece of rope. But it was transportation of a sort. I headed west a few miles and then north into some of the wildest country I've ever seen. It reminded me of the Everglades in Florida. The so-called road I followed was a deeply rutted set of wagon tracks full of mud and potholes. On both sides, the brush-covered, soggy swamp. There were huge, rotting logs crawling with water moccasins out sunning themselves. Yeah, I was glad I had some kind of a path to follow. And then up ahead, I saw a shack sitting on stilts to keep it above flood water. But as they slowed down to make a turn over toward it, the gunshot from over by the cabin smashed into the windshield. I stepped on it and spun the wheel to get away. But the second shot caught a front tire. The car went into a skid. Are you smoking more now, but enjoying it less? Have a real cigarette, have a Kellogg. The best tobacco makes the very best smoke. Have a real cigarette, have a camel. Are you looking for flavor and mildness? Have a real cigarette, have a camel. The best tobacco makes the very best smoke. Have a real cigarette, a real cigarette, a real cigarette, have a camel. If you're smoking more today, but enjoying it less, try camels. The Camel blend of costly Turkish and domestic tobaccos has never been equal for rich flavor, easy-going mildness, real smoking satisfaction every time you light up. The best tobacco makes the best smoke. Have a real cigarette, a real cigarette, a real cigarette, have a Camel. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Moonshine Matter. When I came to, I was lying beside the car at the edge of the muddy wagon tracks. As for my gun, well, it must have been thrown out of the holster into the swamp. I started to rise to see how much damage had been done to the car. But then I saw them. Two lanky, hard-faced men dressed in tattered jeans. One of them, the taller of the two, carried a long rifle, a vintage I'd seen only in museums. The other had picked up a piece of a tree limb for a club. And so as they came warily over to where I lay, I decided wisdom is the better part of valor. I played possum. I tell you, you made a mistake, Morphy. He ain't no revenue. Can't you see that? Maybe he can, and maybe not. Of course he ain't. I know every revenue in these parts, Morphy, and he ain't one of them. You think I killed him, Cass? He didn't hit that there tree hard enough to hurt his car none, serious. And who is he, Cass? First, we finds out if he's still alive or if he's dead. Well, I'm keeping this here gun on to him. You still alive, mister? Uh, oh. See that, Morphy? He's still alive. Uh, who What happened? Now, you watch him, Cass. Where are you? Me. My name's Cass Dingle, and this here is Morphy Teed. Now, you put down that gun, Morphy. You ask him who he is, Cass. Who are you, mister? Name is Dollar. 
Show me a dollar. What you doing out here, Mr. Dollar? Well, I've come with some money. Some insurance money for Mrs. Yuffa Crump. What's that mean, Cass? It mean that Miss Yuffa gets some money on account of Casper was killed. She's a mighty fine woman, Mr. Dollar. She's a mighty fine woman, Mr. Johnny. You shut up, Morton. Just because I got a fancy for taking care of Miss Yuffa now that Casper's gone, it's none of your business. Now, uh, how much you got for Miss Yuffa, Mr. Johnny? Five thousand dollars. What's the matter, you, Cass? Can't you see we got to get Miss Johnny and all that money over to Miss Eufa? Now, come on, now. If and he be all right. You all right, Mr. Johnny? Well, give me a hand and we'll find out. Yes, sir. <clears throat> there you are, Mr. Johnny. Why, well, Mr. Johnny. What's the matter? That now holster. Ain't you got a gun for hit? I'm afraid my gun is somewhere out in that swamp. Now, that's too bad, ain't it, Captain? Morphy's right, Mr. Johnny. There's some folks around here liable to shoot first and find out about you after. Some folks, huh? Now, I made a mistake, Mr. Johnny, and I'm real sorry. But Cass, he meant somebody like Dade Whopper. Yeah, who's Dade Whopper? Why, he's the one that killed all Casper Crump. You sure of that? Yes, sir. Dade Whopper. But no matter who you are, you better look out for him, Mr. Johnny. Why do you say that? No matter who you are, he ain't gonna believe it. He's gonna think you come in here after him. Even if you tell him different? Even if the good Lord himself told him different. But now I got a jug in that cabin, Mr. Johnny. It'll fix you up real good. Then me and you can take the money to Miss Yuffa. Man, you better come back here and find your gun in case Dade Whopper shows up. Oh, don't worry about it. As soon as I turn over that money to you for Crump, I'm on my way. Here's Hollywood star Mona Freeman. Who feels like acting with a miserable cold? I relieve cold distress the fast way with four-way cold tablets. Yes, tests of all the leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting. Amazing four-way starts in minutes to relieve muscular pains and headache, reduce fever, calm upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. When a cold strikes, do what I do. Take four-way cold tablets. It's the fast way to relieve nasty cold distress and feel better quickly. Four-way, only 29 cents. And now, here's a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. To get rid of embarrassing dandruff in three minutes, change to Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep unsightly dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair. Rub in one minute. Add water, lather one minute. Then rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch and embarrassing dandruff's gone. At the same time, Fitch can brighten hair up to 35%. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today. And now, Act Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Cass Dingle's cabin. Well, I'm afraid I've never stepped into a more squalid, filthy, grimy place. How a human being could ever live in it, much less call it his home. After I giant up with Miss Yufa, maybe she'll make it even nicer. Maybe even hang up some of them lacy curtains. Anyhow, on the excuse I needed all the fresh air I could get, I sat on the door sill. As for the jug of corn liquor that Cass dug up, brother. Right out of Casper Crump's big still. That's Miss Euphra's now. The best there is. The first gulp had me gasping for breath. I felt like I was on fire inside. So Cass strained the tadpoles out of some branch water for a chaser. After the second snort, I was ready to tackle anybody in the world single-handed. Even Dade Whopper. I told you that it'd fix you up. And now, oughtn't we go see Miss Yuffa? Yeah, sure, Cass, why not? Only, where's Morphy? Oh, he took in his dugout and went on ahead to say the good news. Dugout? So me and you, we'll go in mine. <laughs> 
Well, sir, if you've never ridden in one of those tiny dugouts, you have something not to look forward to. Every minute as he pulled us along through the swamp, I was sure the narrow little craft would tip over. But he handled it well, and after a quarter mile or so up the slough, as he called it, we landed in front of another, a larger cabin. But then... Mr. Dollar? Yeah, what is it, Morphy? One of you for his young uns, the spoiled one. You mean that no good lace here, huh? That's the one, Cass. He heard me tell Miss Johnny's here. He run off to tell Dade Whopper. Oh, that ain't good, Miss Johnny. He'll be coming here after you. Ah, so what? Stop worrying about it, Cass. We'll just take things as they come. But Dade Whopper's pies. Dade Whopper's pies. Yeah, well, stop worrying. Let's go in and see Mrs. Crump. Now, Mr. Johnny, I hate to say this. Well? But when somebody says stop worrying about Dade Whopper... Yeah? I sure hope none of that white mule ain't gone to your head, Mr. Johnny. Mrs. Eufa Crump, much to my surprise, turned out to be a rather nice-looking girl of about 20, despite the fact she was the mother of four kids. Her cabin boasted four separate rooms, a couple of worn-out rugs on the floor, some lace curtains. With almost childish delight, she put her ex on the receipt for the insurance and stuffed the money into a hiding place under the floor, then made no bones about the fact that most of it would go to improving the moonshine still her husband had left her with. And with Cass, you're helping me. It's going to be the best still in all these here now parts. Well, good for you, Mrs. Crump. And, Cass, I'm going to see that you get yourself a nice suit of clothes, a whole suit. Oh, now, Eufa. And, Mr. Johnny, I thank you very much, sir. My pleasure, Eufa. Only now, you two better get on your way. If that brat of mine, that lazy, has found Dade Whopper and told him... Dade... Whopper. What, Morphy? Dade Whopper. He's a coming down the slough in his dugout. He's gotten that shotgun with him, too, that he loads up with slugs. And he's coming after you, Mr. Johnny. Miss Johnny, me and you, we better get out of here. Oh, now listen to me, Cass. He's all liquored up, and he ain't going to stop to argue with nobody. Then, Cass, you and Mr. Johnny get on out of here real fast. With three of us here? Now, listen, all of no, you. No, sir, Mr. Johnny. Now, you come on with me. Munch, munch, munch a bunch of Fritos. Corn chips, it's not polite to smack your lips. But you can't help it with Fritos corn chips. Munch, munch, munch a bunch of Fritos corn chips. Whenever you have a party or friends drop in, serve a bowl of crisp Fritos corn chips and watch your guests dig in. They're golden chips of corn just made to munch. Serve them plain or with your favorite dip. There's a special Fritos in a king-size style that's just right for dips. Munch, munch, munch a bunch of Fritos corn chips. You'll find Fritos corn chips taste just right whenever the occasion calls for good munching. They have such good crisp flavor, such good for you nourishment, there's contentment in every munch. Get Fritos today, F-R-I-T-O-S, Fritos corn chips. And now, Act Four of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Morphy was scared. My gun was somewhere out in the swamp. So again, it was a case of letting wisdom be the better part of valor. Especially after Morphy made it plain that even his rifle wouldn't mean a thing against Whopper when he'd had a jug full. Morphy promised to do all he could to keep Dade from following us. But by the time Cass and I got halfway down the slough, we could see Dade coming after us. And he was a big man, too. And though Cass was mighty skillful with the pushing pole, he kept gaining on us. We, we can't make it, Mr. Johnny. Then push us in anywhere, Cass. But we can try, sir. We can try. Morphy say that he keeps that thing loaded with slugs? Yes, sir. Drunk or sober. He can hit anything with hit. Then pull us over and we'll take our chances in the woods. He's not more than 35 or 40... Oh! Chance was dead before he hit the water. I jumped over after him into the shallow swamp. 
I started swimming over to a sort of island, a big grassy hummock. And over my shoulder, I could see that Dade was raising his gun again, aiming at me. I grabbed a lung full of air and went under. Changed my course, swimming toward a patch of tulies, hoping I'd have enough breath to get to it. Several times as I swam along under the surface, I brushed aside something living. Maybe they were moccasins, I don't know. But they were nothing to the danger from the drink-crazed man with a shotgun. Finally, my lungs bursting, I reached the tulies and came to the surface. Emerging slowly and breathing as quietly as I could. Here. I know you come to get me, too, for killing half the crunk. I held my breath. But you ain't gonna. But I'm gonna get you first. There ain't nobody get you away from me, you hear me? I can see the mud you stirred. He when you could come crack up me by the mud I'd stirred up when I'd I swum along in the water. He was ready with a shotgun me, to do the same thing to me he'd done to Cass, to kill me. And all I had were my two bare hands and my wits. I could hear him coming closer, closer. He was at the other side of the patch of tulies now, his gun ready for me. I could see his hulking shadow now. I got you now, Dollar. I'm going to kill you now. Quietly, I slipped under the water again, and I swam hard for where I'd seen him. And then I found his legs, and with all the strength I had, I lifted him. No, you face! But he missed, and I struck him, and I struck him. And I struck him. So maybe those people were pretty much a law unto themselves. But Dade Wubber went back to Kennett. There he'll stand trial for two murders. And I'll just continue to poke along in this soft, cozy little job of mine. Yeah. Expense account total, including some new clothes and a trip back to Hartford, 340 bucks even. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. Constipation is something people don't talk much about, but it can be a problem for anyone even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Now, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, as close to natural acting as possible, and a medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Well, pleasant tasting chocolated X-Lax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. X-Lax is gentle. Next morning, it gives you the closest thing to natural action. And that's why many doctors and millions of people use X-Lax with complete confidence. X-Lax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity gently. Overnight. Is X-Lax in your medicine cabinet? Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's program. Well, next week, I go deep underground into a copper mine to meet a killer in the dark. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Harry Bartell, Ben Wright, Sam Edwards, Vic Perrin, and Ralph Moody. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Here are the facts. Two out of every three persons in New York State under 40 years of age have now received at least one dose of the soft vaccine. Over half of these people have received the three doses needed for maximum protection. If you are not vaccinated against polio, the time may come when you will need this iron lung. What will your children do then? Your New York State Health Department urges you to be vaccinated against polio now. This is important for people of all ages and especially important for those under 40, the age group where the incidence of polio is the greatest. Remember, Salk vaccine is safe and effective in preventing paralytic polio. 
WROW Albany, where you get a new exciting morning glow with the Bob Kennedy Show. 6 to 10 on Radio 59.